what we're going to do today is we're going to look at some of the things that we found uh, concerning features of jQuery mobile and features of HTML5 forms. Now, some of us in posting went a little um, off the topic of HTML5 forms and just talked about HTML5 stuff in general, which is perfectly fine. Um, I wanted the focus to be on forms, but that's not an issue at all um, because this stuff, um, you know, this stuff, uh, you know, is worthwhile and, and bears repeating. Um, I'm going to ask you each to talk a little bit about the things that you found and, and the most important. Uh, Joey is not here, so I'll start and I'll do his portion. All right, we'll run through his resources and look at his example. The one thing he posted is very valuable. It is a list of all of the data roles that that you can put in. And we'll be seeing some of these um, uh, coming into play. Um, we've seen some of these, but um, it is worthwhile to see uh, a list of all of them. All right, data role equals content, control group, dialogue, enhancement, field container, fixed toolbar, and so on down the line, footer. So we've seen a handle of those already, or a handful of those already, but it's good to have a comprehensive list. And throughout some of the examples today, we're going to hit some of the other ones that we didn't cover. We're not necessarily going to hit all of them because there's, there's quite a list, but it's good for you to be aware um, what's out there. So, so do take the time to scan through this to see, um, to see what is available and so you can add some of this functionality to your pages. Um, let's see. Next, he had something about uh, he pointed to this link, with Aunt, which Andrew also mentioned. Um, the figure part, you can review that on your own. I did want to talk about this. All right, IDs for headers and footers are not needed anymore. That's a, a bit of a misstatement, but we'll, we'll clarify what that, uh, what is meant by that, and uh, the implication of that. In addition, we'll talk about some browser compatibility issues associated with that. Um, the div in previous versions of HTML was sort of the workhorse, all right? We put divs for sections of our page, all right? So if we had a navigation, or if we had a footer, or if we had a header, or if we had a content area, chances are we had a div for it, all right? Um, that is being replaced in HTML5. I shouldn't say replace. This is being augmented in HTML5 with a handful of other tags that are geared towards more specific purposes. So, HTML4, we had a div and an end div. And that was meant to represent a division or a section of our page. All right, you break down a page into sections, and then there's a div for each one. And what we would do oftentimes to uh, differentiate between the different divs is we would give them an ID. So we would have div ID equals header. div ID equals footer, and so on, and would describe that. 
We can still do it that way. The div isn't deprecated, and we can still do that. And we'll talk about maybe some reasoning on why, why you might want to do that. But HTML5 offers a handful of new structural tags that are sort of special cases of divs. Whereas you can use them, semantically your page is better marked up then. Because a div is simply a div, it's simply a section of the page. It doesn't really identify anything special about that section. All right. In HTML5, what we have is we have we have a header tag. In HTML4, we might have done div id equals header. And then we style the id header a certain way. In HTML5, you can replace that with a header tag. Not to be confused with the h1 through h6 tags or the head tag, but it's meant to be like the header of the page. All right. In addition, and I'm doing this off of memory, we also have footer tag. We have a nav tag. We have an article tag. We have an aside tag. And we have a generic section tag. Now, most of these are probably pretty obvious. A header is meant to be the header of the page. A footer is meant to be the footer of the page. Nav is meant to be the main navigation of the page. All right. Article is meant to be um, what you would think of on a blog or a, a news site as an article. Um, a group of HTML code, paragraphs, images, and so on that sort of go together to communicate one main idea. An aside is sort of a, like a sidebar article that you'd get in a newspaper or something. You know, there might be, uh, you might read a newspaper article about the guy that jumped from 20 plus miles uh, above the world. There might be an article in the paper about that. There might be a side article that talks about the company that made his spacesuit, for example. It's related to the main article, but it's sort of like a side topic. So, you know, you'll see that sometimes like as a sidebar and so on. And a section is sort of like a generic section, uh, uh, sort of a none of the above. It's a section of stuff, but it's not really an article and all that. Now, I would say it's not worth it to sort of agonize over this. Like, is this a section or is this an article? You know, just, you know, decide and, and, and be done with it. There's, there's no particular reason for you to agonize about that and, and to split hairs. But some of them is pretty obvious the way they, they are meant to be used. The header, footer, nav are, are meant to be pretty, you know, are pretty self-explanatory. And there's a little wiggle room between, gee, is this a side article or is this an article of its own? And it doesn't really matter. Pick one and, and go with it. All right. So we don't need to know, like, the exact definitions of those? The, the last three, you should have an idea what they mean, but I guess what I'm saying is in practice, there's some overlap between okay. those. You know, there's really not a lot of gray area between a header and a footer. Yeah. All right? I mean, that, you know, one's one and one's the other. But an article versus an aside, there's like sort of a gray area. And, and uh, if you had a page, let's say, that had two articles on it, you could make them both in article tags, or if they were related, you could put the bigger one in an article tag and the second one in the side tag, and I don't think anyone would, would fault you or say you did it wrong. All right. All right. Do they have um, different um, things built into them? Different? Such as, like, an article tag may, may make the, um, the text bigger and a, a side article may make it smaller? Well, not by default. These would be like, in the old days, these would be like divs, all right? In other words, they're a block tag, so they, you know, each one starts in its own uh, area, and, uh, but, but there's no, like, default styling for it, unless you're using some sort of framework. Then the framework might put some, some default 
uh, styling uh, into it. Um, now, let's play around with these a little bit. Let's play around with these HTML5 uh, tags and let's see, um, let's see some, some possible drawbacks depending on what browsers we have installed here. This is great. This is a crapshoot because I didn't check browser versions. So we'll see. We'll see what we got. So I'm going to start out and I'm just going to put a page with some of these basic HTML5 tags in it. header, which consists of, let's say, an H1. pre-HTML5, we would have done the same thing like this. Not like that. Like this. And then we would have styled an ID of header. Now if we want to style um, this, we would style the header tag and not an ID of header. All right. Then we can have things like our content, or rather article. I think there's actually a content tag as well. I'm still remembering some of the HTML5 tags. and let's view this in a couple different browsers. Let's save it. And let's view it in Firefox. Hmm. And let's view it in Internet Explorer. All right. Oh, actually, are both no? Both these I viewed in Internet Explorer. Let me view the. Let me view it in Firefox. All right. Hmm. Which one got it right? Which one got it wrong? Because obviously these two pages look different. I'm zoomed in on that one. Let me zoom in on the Firefox one to the same amount. Do you see what the difference is? Uh, the one's stacking vertically, so... Right. So in other words, Firefox is treating those tags as what kind of tags? Block or inline? Block. Block. All right. 
which is what they're supposed to be, right? Because they're sort of special cases of divs, or sort of taking place of the divs, and divs, as we know, are block tags. So Firefox gets us right, i.e. gets it wrong, all right? Now, earlier versions of Firefox also get it wrong, and we'll talk about what you can do to fix this, all right? One thing that you can do to fix this is there's a little, little catch code that you can put in um, that will uh, style it for older versions of Firefox. Then there's a little, uh, another little, sometimes these are called hacks, to style these things correctly for Internet Explorer. For Firefox, what you do is, and I'm going to put the style sheet right as part of the page, just uh, so I only have the one document open. But, if we were running an earlier version of Firefox and it wasn't smart enough to know that header, article, and footer were supposed to be block elements, we could put this little snippet of code in our style rule. And that would tell it. to treat these as though these are block elements. Internet Explorer and Firefox take a different strategy with styling stuff that they don't know about. All right. So Internet Explorer 8 doesn't know about these HTML5 tags. Neither do certain versions of Firefox, by the way. But they take a different strategy. Firefox, even if it doesn't know about a tag, you can still put a style rule in for that tag. So we don't have an earlier version of Firefox. But if we did, I could put header display block, header background blue, article background gray. And even though Firefox didn't know what header was, because it was an old version of Firefox done pre-HTML5, Firefox would have displayed the style correctly. All right? Firefox browser effectively says, look, I don't know what this tag is supposed to be, but there is one, and you've specified a style rule, therefore I'm going to apply that style rule. So that's the strategy that the Firefox browser takes with tags that it doesn't know. All right? Internet Explorer takes a different strategy. And that strategy is, if I don't know about you, I'm going to ignore you, <laughs> all right? Which is exactly why, in these cases, we see that there's no difference between the two. Um, if I go in, for example, and I'll do a style on the header, background yellow. Firefox knows, this version of Firefox knows about HTML5 tags, so it makes my header yellow. Internet Explorer, on the other hand, doesn't know about headers, so it ignores that style rule. Even if we had an old version of Firefox, it would still be smart enough to say, hey, I don't know what a header it is, but whatever it is, I'm going to make it yellow. All right? Now, what do you do for IE? There's a, a little hack that's called the HTML5 shiv. And what that does is it allows you to put code in, a little snippet of JavaScript code, that goes in and... Uh, programmatically through JavaScript forces the styles on those HTML5 elements. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to download I had this code in my one example. So I'm going to download the source for that. my 
HTML. And then the script you can download if you just Google uh, HTML5 shiv, but I've already downloaded it, so I'll I'll simply copy it. Uh, locally. sudden HTML5 can style those elements uh, correctly. So let me summarize this part of the discussion. HTML5 has a several structural tags that in some ways do a better job than the old div tag. A div tag simply meant generically a section of the page. The new tags are things like header, footer, article, and so on. And what they do is they allow us to more precisely define the sections of our page. If we can define them more precisely, then we get a lot more flexibility as far as styling them and, and so on and so forth. So, in HTML5, instead of divs, we can use the headers, the navs, the footers, and so on. But, there's always a catch, right? Because this is web development. Web development doesn't happen in a perfect world. And the catch is, is what about going backwards for browsers that don't support HTML5? Well, there's two categories of browsers. Internet Explorer, 8 and previous, and everyone else, previous to HTML5. For Internet Explorer, 8 and previous, you need this HTML shift which is simply a little snippet of JavaScript that you can Google and find it somewhere and put this snippet of code in and that will make HTML5 able to apply the styles that you set for the HTML5 elements. This will allow Internet Explorer to interpret correctly the styles for HTML5 elements. For Firefox and other browsers, we put this snippet of code in just in case it doesn't know that headers, articles, footers, and all the other ones, there's a list of three or four more of them I don't remember off the top of my head, um, this sets the display to block for those. So it treats them like they're block elements. Then, again, because of the difference in strategy between the two browsers, uh, Firefox, even if it doesn't know those tags, will allow you to apply styles to them. So even with an old version of Firefox that doesn't know what a header is, we can put a style on it and it will appear correctly. So bottom line is if you're doing any development and you're concerned about browsers not supporting HTML5, have a line like this in your CSS for old versions of Firefox, etc., have this in there for HTML, or I'm sorry, for Internet Explorer uh, 8 and previous. Questions about this? So the, the style is just kind of a fallback for the weakness of Firefox, if it exists. Which style? Uh, what you have in there in terms of like the header and background. Yeah. This line right here is saying, hey, Firefox and other browsers, not Internet Explorer, if you don't know what a header 
an article, a footer, and again, the rest of them, a side uh, um, content, um, nav. If you don't know what those are, treat them like they're block tags. All right, so yeah, that's a fallback. Actually, both this line of code and these lines of code are both fallbacks. This is fallback for earlier versions of Firefox, etc. This is fallback for earlier versions of Internet Explorer. If magically every web browser in the world disappeared and was replaced by the latest version of Google Chrome, the latest version of Firefox, the latest version of Safari, the latest version of Internet Explorer, you wouldn't need any of those. If automatically around the world someone snapped their fingers and everyone had the newest version of their preferred browser, then you probably wouldn't need either of these two pieces of code because this is for IE 8 and prior. This is for earlier versions, and I'm not sure the version number in Firefox, but earlier versions of Firefox, etc., that don't support HTML5. Now, let's pop this code into jQuery and see if jQuery does anything to this by default. I'm kind of curious. Here I have a jQuery page that has those different things that make it a, a jQuery page. And I'll go and save it. And I'm going to view it in Firefox. And it doesn't really do the kind of styling would expect. All right. The reason for that is jQuery is triggered based on those um, data roles. So we can go in and put those hooks in. should take care of things and we should get our standard looking jQuery-ish page, jQuery mobile page. Just to bring up when I was doing this homework and uh, the new buttons, I could not figure out if the CSS to work to actually uh, alter the buttons, not the text that goes along the sides of it. Okay. Yeah, so okay. Maybe you know, try something like that a little bit later on. Okay. Yeah, re remind me when, when, yeah, remind me and we can, we can take a look at that. Right. So now, all right, there we have our standard jQuery mobile-ish look to this. You'll notice this all over the place in, in especially mobile web development. And David used a good word, fallback, all right? Um, there's things that you do redundantly just so that certain situations are handled. All right? So, for example, we put the HTML5 shiv in there just in case they're running an earlier version of, of, uh, of Internet Explorer. We put that one line that makes those tags block tags just in case they're running an earlier version of Firefox. We've defined those elements as header, article, and footer but to get jQuery mobile to work, we also add the data role, and, and that will allow jQuery mobile to work with them. So you'll often see we, we put in uh, a, 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 a catch for IE before.